Hey there, I'm Matt Tommy, and over the last 10 years, I've helped thousands of Christian artists all over the world start thriving spiritually, artistically, and in the marketplace, while at the same time building my own super successful art business. If you're ready to bust through the roadblocks that have held you back for years, create the work you love, and really live the life you know God created you to live in His kingdom, then you're in the right place, my friend. Now, with over a half a million downloads, you're listening to the Thriving Christian Artist Podcast. Well, hey there, my friend. It's Matt, and I'm really glad that you're with me on the podcast today. You know, about a year and a half ago or so, Facebook made a really big pivot toward Facebook groups and encouraging people to develop community uh, on Facebook through their group's platform. And it's something that I've used over many, many years to uh, grow a successful business, both in my art business and my online artist coaching business. Uh, It really has become a very pivotal uh, foundational staple element of what we do um, in, in building audiences and building connection with people. And, uh, you know, it can be really confusing for folks. And so today's guest is a friend of mine, Sandra DeFreitas, who I met several years back. She is a guru when it comes to a uh, Facebook group. She's going to be breaking it down for you today and uh, maybe hopefully encouraging you to start your own Facebook group to connect with clients and potential clients as you begin to uh, build your own connections as you're selling your um, art or your art courses, uh, your consulting, your anything that you're doing online. It's a great, great way to build connection. Now, before I start, I want to definitely give a shout out to one of my podcast listeners. And today's comes from Katie, uh, who left me a, a review over on Stitcher. And she said, Matt, your podcast and five-minute mentoring sessions are being used by God as a balm of truth to my soul. I'm so grateful to God that our paths cross and that you are rising to the challenge of mentoring other believers in business to thrive in all that God created them to be. Thank you for the wonderful ministry that this is. Well, Katie, thanks so much for your kind words. And you guys know I'm a sucker for a good review. (laughs) I love it. Our team loves it. It just lets us know that we're on the right track and that what we're doing is a blessing to your life. So please, whatever uh, podcast app you're listening to out there, please take a moment. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of our episodes and also leave a review. It just lets us know that what we're doing is making a difference in your life and uh, nothing could be more of a blessing to me than that. All right. Well, guys, I'm going to get out of the way and uh, you're going to love this episode with my friend Sandra DeFreitas. Be sure to hit me up on Instagram or on Facebook and let me know if this episode has been a blessing to you. And if you're taking some of the strategies that we're talking about today, especially with Facebook groups and employing them in your business. All right, here's my friend. Well, hey, my friend, I'm glad that you're with me on the podcast today. I've got my friend Sandra DeFreitas with me all the way from Toronto, Canada. Sandra, thank you so much for being on today. My pleasure. and Thank you for the invite. It's awesome to be here. Absolutely. I've been watching you for a couple of years, all that you're doing with Facebook groups, and uh, just really thought, man, I'd want to get you in front of our audience to talk about the importance of nurturing community, developing community through Facebook groups and all that. So for those who may not know you and, uh, and all that, why don't you give us a little insight into your world, just who sure. you are, what you do and that sort of thing. Yeah. So um, back in like 2004, I knew I didn't want to work for anyone anymore, which will <laughs> come into a full hilarious circle in the end of the story. And so I actually started studying life coaching because I thought I wanted to be a life coach or some kind of coach. I then hired a coach who was uh, teaching people how to become a million dollar coach. Uh, His philosophies were all online marketing, which I didn't know about back then. So having a computer science background with the online learning, I jumped in, learned all that I could, helped people out and uh, started like an agency. So I was doing a lot of the tech work, marketing and built a team around that. In 2000. 16, no, 2015, I was on maternity leave and I said to Stu McClare and I go, Hey, if you ever need anyone to like help you out with any stuff, like I have some time, my team takes care of everything. And I would really like to learn from you. He said, great. We have a project. I'll let you know. And it wasn't until like a year later that he said, okay, we have a different project and I really could use your help. Great. So I drove over to the office and I'm like, what are you doing? Well, we built a course on how to build membership sites. I'm like, 
perfect because <laughs> Stu had started Wishlist Member and I knew Stu from Wishlist Member, which is a right. plugin that helps you create a membership site. And he was referring clients to us and we built all their membership sites. And I had followed Stu and I knew his philosophy on membership sites and everything. So that was great. So I was asked to be on the team to help out during the launch. That was supposed to be three weeks. <laughs> Two years <laughs> later. Right? Uh, exactly. The three weeks turned into, you know, another three months, which turned into another nine months, which ended up being two full years. So I went uh. from, helping with the launch to being their uh, community manager, which I didn't even know what a community manager was at the time, really working the Facebook groups. In fact, Stu said to me during the launch, he said, I don't know, some of my friends are creating Facebook groups for their launches. What do you think? I'm like, yes, absolutely, 100%. And I go, and I know one of your buddies got 103 or 803 people, so we'll just have to beat him. Because <laughs> I love Stu. He's got a competitive streak. Competitive, right, right. <laughs> right? And I knew we got we had to do this. And I'm a numbers person and I love com competition too. So I'm like, it's like, all right, if you can manage it, we'll do it. I'm like, great, no problem, I'll manage it. So that was the first three weeks. And then they kept me on because they needed me to help out in the Facebook group for the course. So I helped out in the Facebook group. I uh, did everything from support to community management to consulting and launch strategy and membership strategy and marketing strategy, you name it. Um, and then a year later they did their live event and I was asked to be the head coach of their high end coaching program. And about a year, just over a year later, I decided it was time for me to move on and I didn't know what I was going to do. And people kept asking me about Facebook groups and I kept saying, ah, nobody wants to learn about Facebook groups. <laughs> What's there to learn? And everyone kept saying, you got to do this. You got to teach us, please. We need to know these ins and outs that you seem to know so well. So this is where I became the Facebook group person. Isn't that the way it works though? I think our zone of genius sometimes it like comes so easily for us that we think, of course, everybody knows how to do this, but, but they don't, right? That was the second time in my life that happened. The first time was with my first coach. He was doing work on his computer at a workshop and he couldn't get something to work. So I walked up, I helped him, and I sat back down. Well, the second time it, helped, it happened, I sat, stood up, walked over to help him. And on my way back, I'm like, how rude that none of these people stood up to help him when they all know how to do this. So when I sat down, this is in my head, I sat down, right. and someone goes, Sandra, you know how to do this stuff? I said, well, yeah, doesn't everybody? And they're like, no, absolutely <laughs> not. So it's those moments that I live yeah. for. I think they're great. It just, when they happen, you're in a little bit of a piece of doubt and then you're just, you see the possibility and it's fantastic. Like I've absolutely loved teaching this, consulting on this, strategizing, you know, digging real deep into it. This is, this is my jam. That's so good. Now I know a couple of years ago, maybe a year ago, year and a half ago, Facebook kind of made a big pivot uh, kind of toward groups. They had been focused so much on pages and developing your business page. People spent millions of dollars on that. And then one day they come out and go, yeah, not so much. We're going to be focusing on, on groups now. And everybody was like, what are you talking about? But those that had groups, we were like, yes, we started seeing engagement go up and, and that sort of thing. So give us a, a lay of the land, I guess, in, in Facebook. Why are groups important right now? Uh, why should somebody that's an, an artist, an emerging artist, or somebody that's out there trying to sell their work or maybe develop their first e-course, why would a group even make sense for them? Well, Facebook is putting so much emphasis on groups because people think that the number one reason Facebook is it, exists is to sell ads. Well, if there's no one on Facebook, they have no one to sell ads or show the ads to. So their number one thing is to get people into Facebook and keep them and keep the people happy. So what happens when you have a group? You don't go to it once and never go back. You're right. usually there over and over again. Um, I'm in a lot of creativity groups and sometimes I just go specifically into a group to see what people have been working on. And what does that do? It keeps me on Facebook. It shows me those ads. <laughs> yeah. um, and then, you know, if as a business owner, I've created, created ads. So groups, bring people onto Facebook and keep them there longer too. Like Facebook really wants people to stay on their right. app, to stay on facebook.com. So that's one of the main reasons why they are really connected. 
And I mean, look at the time we're in right now. Online communities is everything, right. everything, everything. And so um, actually I, in 2000, what year are we in? Oh yeah, 2020, of course. <laughs> Um, 2019, they started posting these little banners across Facebook uh, saying groups is now easier to share groups that you love, um, create a group. Uh, uh, groups are now at the heart of Facebook and they right. were really pushing it. And then in February this year, they bought their first Super Bowl ad strictly about groups. And that ad alone, let me see, I've got my screenshot here on base on uh, YouTube. Where was it now? Oh, I didn't put in. Oh, here it is. This was, I think I took this screenshot in April. That will add from February 1st to April had 22 million views. Wow. What wow. an ad. Come on. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. But it goes to show you that they really want people using ads. So for creatives, I mean, you know, it's harder to get together with people right now. And right. who knows how long this will last or if it will reoccur. But to have your own, another platform for you to gather your people, connect with them, build relationships, um, educate them, um, make connections, do market research even right. in your Facebook groups uh, is vital. So to have a group where, let's say I was an artist and I taught painting, I can have a free group for everyone who's kind of interested in painting do a few trainings, teaching them how to paint, and then roll out a membership site or roll out a course. Right. And then you can create another group, Facebook group, for the people in the paid program where you can teach via Facebook Live. You could use rooms now, Facebook rooms, um, to get together. You could uh, use something like Zoom or uh, StreamYard and go live into your Facebook group. You can use units to organize all your content, but you've got a space to put your material. Now I always say, don't just put everything on Facebook. Right, right. Because if you got shut down one day, I don't want you coming after me. The but poof, right. It right? Goes away, right. There goes your business, there goes everything. I always um for like for my membership and my course, I have everything on a site with all the content. But we do all our Q and A's, our Facebook lives in the group. Yeah. We put all our reminders in the group. Yeah, um, we're the same way. Right. Right. And so that way if something happens to the Facebook group, we still can connect with them through the site and through our email list of the people who have bought. Um, so yeah, that, I mean, those are some reasons to get into groups, but a lot of it is they can grow quite well organically. Um, yeah. When you're in a Facebook group, there's a section on the side that says, has other suggested groups. And those are based on the people that are in your group and who they're friends with and who you're friends with within your group and what all their interests are. Right. So you might notice you're in a group about business and then all these other business groups start showing up or you're in a group for instapot which is there's some groups for instapot recipes it's like 1.3 million people right a keto or whatever it is yeah, yeah all keto is another yeah. one i'm just yeah. insane so um but with those you're in that group it started showing you other related groups to that so facebook is trying to get you into more groups and I'm okay with that. I, I'm not going to recover from this, but I probably have 200 Facebook groups that I'm in. A lot of them are for research, <laughs> uh, research, client groups, uh, other communities that I'm in. Like I have a word, a whole bunch of WordPress groups and business, you know, the whole, every part of my life is a different community on Facebook groups. Um, but they feel good to be a part of, right? Like when someone gets you, like if you're, if you're an artist, let's say you play the guitar and no one else in your family plays the guitar, nobody gets the brilliance of it or they can't help you with a problem. You right, go into right. a Facebook group, everyone gets it. They just they get, get you. You feel the you connection, feel right? It's huge, right? Yeah, you feel like you belong. Like these are my people. That's yeah, what. That's huge. That's yeah, huge. It's huge. It's huge. Now, I know one of the things that a lot of people who maybe have never sold anything before, um, they don't understand really the core value of building connection, that KLT factor, that no like and trust factor that, that we all talk so much about in marketing and how that, that really is the foundation of everything. And so there can be this idea of, 
well, I posted on Facebook or I put something in the group and nobody bought anything. So this doesn't work for me. And so talk about the difference between, or the balance, I guess, not the difference, but the balance between brand building and connection building. And then also that trans, the transactions that can potentially happen as you build a funnel uh, in and through your group, because those are kind of two different sides of the, of the coin. Would, would you say that? Is that a fair way yeah, to say that? Yeah. So I, I find the more that people know what I do, right? So the brand recognition, people being aware of who I am, the more I'm being referred to in other, like people tag me in other groups, people refer my stuff out. It just, the marketing becomes easier. And the way that they know about me is because I'm active in groups or I've been in courses with them or I've known them some way that I've already built that know, like, and trust. Right. And they're, they know, like, and trust me that they can share me with someone else. Mm. Um, and when that happens, it's like a nice ripple effect of like little sales army people running out <laughs> and like advertising you. It feels so good. Now it does take a while to get there. Right. But um, putting out content that building the relationship with people is more sometimes more important than the actual content. Sometimes people mm. put out more and more and more content and then they wonder why nothing sells. But if I'm only connecting with you through reading your content or looking at something creative you created, that's one thing. But if you get on a video, like a Facebook Live, or you do group Zoom call, the connection between everyone just strengthens so much. Like if you ever met a celebrity, you already felt like you knew them. Right. Right? Because you've seen them on video, on interviews, you know. Lots of different with, situations with different totally. people. Right. Right. You have those icebreakers. You have, you know, their mannerisms. You know that they have dogs. You know that they love coffee. You have these things to talk to them about. And I feel like the more that we connect with our audience, even if you have a small audience and you connect with them, it makes a huge difference. Last year around this time, I launched my membership site. My group, this is, I have two free groups. So that one group was that 280 people. And I had done the month before a, what I call a coffee chat, which is everyone comes on Zoom, bring your favorite coffee, tea, whatever. Let's socialize. It always ends up being a Q&A, but it's so <laughs> casual that even my lovely introvert, you know, and very, very shy people come out because they know it's so casual, you know? So they come in and they ask all their questions and we talk and we share tips and things like that. Every single person that was on that Zoom call joined my membership. Wow. Wow. Every single one because they felt like they knew me and the trust mm. factor and like the what's what's so good is when someone feels like they can actually reach out to you and speak to you you're real you care you um you know you're not going to run and hide you know you're you're there for them they'll just be your number one fans for yeah, a while that's huge. And, and it just builds the relationship and the trust it shows that you care and right. i think What's going on right now on the online world is a lot of fake caring. Mm. So don't be a fake carer, but genuinely care that people get results, that people take your training or they take your artwork and they actually get something out of it. Don't just sell it to them and see like, bye-bye, see, I'm out of here. That's why the Facebook groups are so powerful with courses because then the leader is still there answering questions, doing Facebook lives, uh, adding more, you know, content as they go because they see where you're struggling and help and helping you out. Do you think, I mean, I think so much of the time that I see Facebook groups really thriving for people, I know for us and other kind of thought leaders and, and content creators that I see are, are when you're mixing an online delivery of a service or, you know, an online course or something like that. How does that differ for people when, you don't have any interest in doing that. You're not trying to teach a course online. You're not trying to sell a membership. You're, you, you're an artist. You've got a, a physical piece of artwork that you want to sell to a physical customer somewhere in the world or somewhere in your locality. How would you 
approach a group in yeah. that way, as opposed to somebody that's more on the digital side of the world. So if you're creating a piece of art, there is nothing like showing people the process and the story behind it. So if you had a Facebook group that was basically your VIPs, that when your art was ready to sell, it would sell first in the Facebook group. And if it didn't sell, then it would sell out of the group. That would get people to join. Mm. But you can go live and show the stages of what you're creating. So let's say it's painting, because that's kind of easy. You have a blank canvas. You start off your first Facebook Live. This is my idea for this painting. Um, it's going to either look like this image or it's going to be about this abstract idea. I'm going to get started. And then like they can ask you questions as you go. You can start painting. They can watch. Okay, then pause that. Two days later, come back again. Okay, everyone, while we were on break, I added some shading over here because of this reason or that. And you've developed this story. And now, as people have been watching it and being a part of the story and contributing, they're more emotionally involved in this right, piece they're invested, of invested, right, in the journey. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. They're more involved and invested than they were if you just posted on, let's say, Instagram or Facebook, here's my painting, it's up for sale. Right. It has a story, it has a process. When their friends come over and look at it, they can say, oh yeah, while the artist was painting it, I was there watching and I actually suggested the yellow paint and they, they love the idea and went for it. You know, like there's something yeah. behind it. It's so much more powerful when you're part of the process. Well, I, I've loved selling, you know, in my own studio. So I've had a studio for the last almost 10 years in what's called the river arts district here in Asheville. So it's 200 plus artists in 23 buildings. People can come in and out and, wow. you know, watch us create in the studio. And there's such a connection that happens, but, through technology, if you're in Podunk, Iowa, with nobody around you that are that are art yeah. buyers, you can create that virtual uh, that virtual kind of studio space, and it kind of brings me to another question. And I think this is just kind of it can be a basic understanding that we all need to have in marketing. But talk about the importance of having a two way conversation in social media as opposed to just kind of you going on there and trying to sell your stuff because a lot of people treat Facebook and Instagram as a billboard rather than an opportunity for conversation. And there's a huge difference in, in how you approach that and also in the results, right? 100%. Yeah. So um, one thing that I came across recently and it just hit me like a ton of bricks is people don't like to be sold to. Mm. So if you go on there saying I'm, going to be talking about what I'm selling. No one's going to come. Right. Wah, wah, but if you wah. go in there, <laughs> yeah, like, oh, thanks. But I don't want that awkward moment when I say, no, thank you. I'm not going to buy. Yeah. So they're going to show up. But if you start off with, hey, you know, here's my story. Here's the story about this product that I created. Here's the story about how I became an artist. And you take us into your world. I want to feel like I connect with someone. I have bought things online from people. I had no intention of buying whatever it was, but I was so deep in the story that, you know, I wanted it. It's like going to a, a concert and you want to leave with at least a t-shirt. Like you want something to go yeah. with. Um, so I feel like, yes, people can go on there and they're like shouting out what their offer is, but that's where they're going to get the lowest sales. Whenever mm. I launch any of my things and any of my clients, I'm like, you have to build this relationship with them and get them engaged to get to know you. So whether you're teaching or you're creating in front of them, giving them an experience, then they want to continue that experience with you. So how do they do that? Whether, whether they buy your art, they sign up for your program, they, you know, book a VIP day of painting with you or, you know, uh, learning how to play the guitar for an entire day. I mean, I wouldn't book that with just anyone. I would need to know that our personalities match, our values match. Yeah. And I'm not going to know that from you just like announcing your, your thing. I want to get to know you as a person. And I don't think people open up enough. They think like, eh, nobody really wants to know my story. But right. yes, we do. Yes, we do. Well, especially with artists, I think there is that mystique around they can just create things out of thin air and there's the talent factor and all of that. And, and, and I, you know, I so appreciate you said, you know, people hate to feel, feel like they're being sold. And at the same time, people love to buy. 
you yeah. know, so we, we want, we want to buy from people that we know, like, and trust and that we have a relationship with. And, um, that is, that is so good. You have to just get them in and know you and, you know, speak to them. Like when someone comes on your Facebook live, say their name, like, Hey Matt, yeah. nice to see you today. Glad you could join us. That makes people feel special. Like, I don't know if you remember, there was a, a show back like early eighties called romper room and yeah. it was a television show. And she would always say the person's name through this like broken ten- uh, tennis racket. She never said my name, but how <laughs> did everyone felt so important when they said their, when she said their name and it's the same on Facebook live when someone mentions you on the Facebook live and you feel acknowledged that deepens the relationship even more, but yeah. you need to bring them on for a reason and build that relationship with them, get them to know, like, and trust you and what it is you do and why it's different from anyone else. Um, and that will help, that will almost help things. I don't want to say sell themselves, but the process is going to be a lot easier. I mean, yeah. there's nothing like getting your first sale and then the next one's a little easier. Then the next one's a little easier. And then it just gets better from there. Cause I think people can, you know, and this is one of those soft, you know, uh, techniques that we all have to kind of uh, master. But I think people can feel when you need to sell them something. People can feel when you're trying to make it happen too much. And I think that's been one of the things I've had to really learn over the years is just be like, you know what? I'm here, whether I'm at a show selling art or whether I'm online or whatever I'm doing, I'm here to build relationships, to be a giver, to, yep. to really, to bless people in what I'm doing, you know, to, to give, give, give. And if, and I just trust that I kind of think of those as seeds, you know, I'm just, I'm casting those seeds all the time and I don't know which ones are going to come up when, I don't know when this is going to bloom or when that was going to mm-hmm. sprout, but I trust that the process works. And I think so many people, they stop before they get enough seeds out <laughs> or, or they don't put enough seeds out or they, you know, they just, they're, they get too uh, hurried about it. And I'm like, you know, as we're faithful to plant the seeds, I think uh, they will definitely sprout in our life. So. Yeah. And another thing is like, you may put out the seed and that might, that person may not buy from you, but they have friends. They have, That's right. they'll That's be right. telling people about you. It makes a huge difference. Yeah. Yeah. A lot absolutely. of my, sales from uh, my courses and stuff came from referrals and my other business all started from referrals too. And it was all about building relationships and connecting with people and live events. But now things are different. It's, you know, 15 years later, it's groups and um, yeah, connecting and showing your value and helping people out. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Well, and you, you practice what you preach. I always appreciate we've gotten to know each other the last couple of years, just on Facebook and you are always so generous with your time. And if I've ever reached out asking a question or whatever, you're like, boom, I'm going to be a giver. And, and that's, I mean, that's how even this happened of just coming on the podcast. It's just a, an opportunity for, for me to say thank you to you for, for that, but also to share your goodness and, and all your wisdom with our audience. And you are, you've been also so generous. You've got a free uh, mini course that you do called Facebook one one Facebook groups one oh one mm-hmm. and uh, that's something that our listeners can take advantage of. So how can they do that? We'll definitely put the link in the show notes, yeah. but uh, what's that about and how can they take advantage of it? Sure. Yeah. So it's a free mini course. There's a couple of videos, some um, lessons in there. It takes you from figuring out what your group is about, how to name it, uh, how to put in the rules and boundaries, really important in a group, how to set it up. So I actually give you a worksheet to think about how you want your group to, to go. And then you watch over my shoulder as I create a group alongside you. And so you can create that group, pause me, rewind me, slow me down, what have you. And we create the group together. Um, And there's some other awesome tidbits in there as well. Um, And if you'd like to grab that, you can go to engagegroups.com slash groups 101. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I know folks are going to want to do that. There's the, that link will be in the show notes. And uh, Sandra, is, so engagegroups.com is at the best place folks can get you online. Absolutely. Uh, yep. Wonderful. Or they can join my free group, Groups for Entrepreneurs with Sandra DeFreitas. <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. Well, Sandra, thank you so much. It's, it can be overwhelming, all the, all the options that are out there for people, but you uh, make it so simple and you really brought it home today for our listeners. So thanks so much for being on the podcast today. My pleasure. Thank you. 
Hey, thanks so much for spending a few minutes with me today on the podcast. Listen, I hope it's been a huge encouragement to you on your journey as an artist. Hey, also, before you leave, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of the other episodes of the Thriving Christian Artist Podcast. And also, be sure to connect with me on Facebook, Instagram, or at my website, which is matttommymentoring.com. Until next time, remember, you were created to thrive. Bye-bye.